All right, and we're live. So today we've got a great guest for you. It's Barry Lebeau from Remax Ultimate in Toronto. So Barry, why don't you take a quick second and tell us about yourself and why you're here? Well, what do you want to know, Ryan? It's my 46th year in real estate, and um, it was a big thing for me last year to close my own brokerage and um, join Remax. And it was basically because I was asked by the broker, and um, first broker ever asked me. So I, it was turned out to be a very good thing. Um, those people that are going alone, I find it um, not as easy to do these days. You've got to be part of a bigger organization for many reasons. But it's been a long ride, 46 years. I mean, I've done it pretty well all. I mean, I've built one of the largest appraisal firms in the country. Um, solid background in mortgage brokerage. I was in construction, renovation. So I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. And uh, I've got a lot more to do. Since you're on the niche agent, why don't you tell us, is it niche or niche for you? Niche. It's niche. Okay, niche. So you are Canadian. Except, <laughs> when, I, except when I cross the border. We switch over. Then I have okay. to say foyer and all those other nice words that the <laughs> Rough and, like to use. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell us a bit about what you've been specializing in and what you're working on now and explain to people why you're here. Well, basically, uh, I see myself as a problem solver. As a matter of fact, I even have a URL, www.problems.ca, which is not live right now, but I'm going to kick it up. Okay. Um, I solve problems in real estate. It's that simple. I've testified as an expert witness and been accepted by courts in over 500 trials, probably close to 600 trials. And I get called in over the years many times by the courts to act in different capacities um, in my in my real estate background, because sometimes in appraisal, sometimes as a broker, sometimes as a mediator arbor arbitrator. So it, it it basically, I'll give you an example of what I'm doing now. I've got a commercial lease. The lease is running out. The tenant it want, has been there for years, wants to buy the building. I've been retained solely to go in and negotiate from someone who is very difficult to negotiate. I've been retained to go in and negotiate between partners that won't talk to each other. Um, I've been asked to sell buildings that have been contaminated. Um, I've been, uh, you know, and I go on and on and on. I mean, I like to work very heavily with the seniors. That's a big part of my market. Yep. Um, because of, you know, I created the Accredited Senior Agent Program, the ASA. I'm the founder of the program, which is now in the good hands of Chris Newell, who's taken it to much higher levels. And Chris is actually going to be on the show, too. So. Yeah, well, Chris Chris has really done an amazing job. He's, he's like, I left, there was about 900 members. Chris has got it up to about 24, 2,500 members. Yeah. Um, and it just keeps growing, and I'm I'm privileged to be part of the Master's accredited senior agent program because I, I sold a fair amount of estate problems this year and right. very difficult properties. Um, those agents that get a listing and get 13 offers the first day it comes out, I'm not one of them, right? Yep. I'm the guy that I everything I touched, I had to work hard because those are the type of properties I handle. And that's just the way it is. And you know what? I love it. I thrive on solving people's real estate problems. So why did you do that? Why did you get into that? And what drew you to that? And what, what did you get oh enjoyment from? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it goes way back, okay. way before you were born. In the <laughs> early 70s, when I had already, I had been a very successful first year in real estate. I sold 100 homes my very wow. first year. I was 21 years of age. And um, I was recruited by a mortgage brokerage to come in as a, as a partner uh, because they wanted my young blood and legs to really build up the business. They were commercial. They wanted to get very heavy into the residential. So I was going out seeing real estate brokers and trying to make deals. Now, in those days, the banks weren't in the mortgage business. We weren't doing much with trust companies. We dealt with private funds. Okay. And wherever I went... I was eventually I was I found myself competing on two things that I didn't want to compete on. One, my fees, my commission, and two, um interest rates. And I sat back and I said to myself, this is the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> if I all I can tell anybody who's Canadian, if you want to really compete on on your fees, just think of Zellers. Where are they today? I mean, you can't drive yourself to the seller. 
So what I did was I looked around and I started saying, I can't compete with these guys. I'm not going to cut my fees down to compete. Right. If I would have cut my fee to $500, then the guy that I, I, I'm up against would have cut him his to $400. Eventually, he would have done it for free just to undercut me. Right. Well, you can't make money on free. Yeah. <laughs> so I sat back and I started to say to myself, where do I have an edge? And I'm 22 years old at this point. And I said to myself, this is ridiculous. And we got in heavy into interim financing. And interim financing is where you get a takeout from the bank or the lender to um, when you're finished construction. We're the guys that lent the money to do the construction. And I went out and I ferreted out small builders. And some of those small builders aren't so small anymore. Right. And the other thing I looked at was Toronto was saturated with guys like me that were, and they were always undercutting me. But once I drove outside of Toronto, I had a business. So I've learned two things. One, never cut your fee. Just find another alternative way of doing business. Yep. And two, go where other people don't go. And that's do what this, what this is all about. what other people don't do. Yep, exactly. And then your costs actually go down. Yep. Now, as a real estate broker, let me explain what I mean by my costs go down. If I'm only looking for plex properties, that's all I want to specialize in, is a plex, a small investment property. Why would I send out blanketing material to all neighborhoods all around? Yeah. Because I'm not, that's what most agents are doing when they do hardcore um, mail drops um, or distribution. They're, they're shotgunning. I'm not shotgunning. In a niche play, you're targeting. Exactly. It's easier. If you're a good shot, and I hate to bring up, you know, the shooting analogy, but I mean, I can take a 22 and I can hit a target a lot easier bullseyes than I can with a shotgun, just aiming, you know, shooting from the hip. So my costs drop because I'm only looking for income-producing properties. Now, it doesn't matter. There are people in niches in real estate all across North America. Some of them are, some people only will sell extraordinarily high-end condos. Other people will turn around and say, you know what, I'm in the low end. Um, a friend of mine sells trailers. Um, somebody else I know sells horse farms. Um, somebody I knew for years made a very successful business selling daycare centers. Wow. And, and somebody else I know sells restaurants. So where I'm going with this is, you get a niche, you work the niche, you don't deviate. Yep, exactly. And you work hard. I have a problem. My my market is our lawyers, lawyers and accountants. That's my that's my target market. Um, they're not easy. These people are not on Twitter. These people are not on Facebook. They may be on LinkedIn. So it's a lot more face to face, direct contact, which in the long run is a better way to do business, anyways. Yeah, and I mean you've proven it. You've been around for. Four six years, so you you know the game. I know the game. I mean, I've tried this year. Um, I did something I haven't done in forty plus years. I called. Um, I I did cold calling in a way. I did a lot of um, flyers. Um, I just sold cards. I had a good year, and I I you know sold a fair amount of property. And I looked and I said, I'm going to try this and see if it kicks up. I didn't even get a phone call. Um, 9,000, uh, I don't believe in hitting them once. You hit them three times over six weeks, 1,500 at a time. Yeah. And I guess I did about 20, 30,000 flyers and uh, well done flyers. Like I didn't professionally done. Yeah. And um, I won't do that again. It wasn't worth it. No, no. I'd rather take one lawyer to lunch. All right. <laughs> a lot cheaper. Depends on the lawyer, I guess. <laughs> Not necessarily, but um, in, in the long run, I, I'm better off. Now, what I'm going to tell everybody, anybody who's listening to this, there's one person they've got to start to read. And the person they've got to read is a fellow named Bill Cates. That's with a C, C-A-T-E-S. Bill Cates is called the referral coach. And he's on Facebook. He's on LinkedIn. I get his um, newsletter all the time. And you know what? Bill, Bill from, I've learned from him on what I was doing wrong with my own getting referrals. Business is all about getting referrals. If you're in a niche, you've got to live on referrals. Yeah, exactly. 
People have to know who you are, where you are. I'll give you an example. You go down to see your count once a year, maybe. You go down to see your count. Now, who knows? Some people may do their own, have a little bookkeeper upstairs somewhere in a plaza. That's fine. But if you've got an accountant that's in a firm, did you ever ask your accountant to turn around and say to them, while I'm here, is there anybody else I should meet? That's what I've learned from Bill Gates. Okay. My niche market thrives because I never run out of contacts. Now, I was a young man. I'm in my 20s. I started doing business with lawyers. Remember, I sold 100 homes my first year. And in those days, the average Canadian moved every five years. And I sat back, and that's one of the reasons I got enticed to come into the um, brokerage business and right. become a partner, is because I realized I killed myself the first year. I mean, I was working 12, 14 hours. If a cop came off shift at midnight, I was out there showing them <laughs> vacant houses at 1 in the morning. Wow. And I didn't care. That's how I worked. Yep. But you can't contain, you can't maintain a pace like that yeah. every year forever, even no matter how young you are. And I realized that I can't go after my first year of business because unless they divorced or there was a, or God forbid, a death or a corporate move, I wasn't going to get many leads from the first hundred people I saw the first time they moved, you know, the first year. Yep. It would take uh, two, three years before there was starting to be some momentum. Yep. And I went after lawyers from day one. That's where I started. I went after lawyers. And that sustained me through my entire career. So how much of your business would you say comes from that then? 100% of my business in the last 12 months has come 100% from referral. Of the referrals, um, about 40% came off from lawyers. Okay. And the others came from personal contacts. Six sales were made from Facebook directly. And you are heavily involved in that. That's how we know each other, through Facebook. So. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've got social media. I have a reach between LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and the different pages and everything. Probably about eleven or 12,000 people. Wow. So now, why the switch from the broker, from your own brokerage to uh, working for another brokerage then? Well, this is going to sound so silly. A couple of years ago, I'd sold my appraisal firm. Um, I was burned out. I was doing. I was traveling North America um, extensively. I was working in a huge case in, in in Texas, flying back and forth. I was all over Ontario. I did a lot of high-rise apartment buildings across Ontario. And I, one thing it did give me over the years, I crisscrossed Canada a lot. I crisscrossed the United States a lot over the years. I was burned out, and um, I didn't want to do it anymore. And appraisal was getting much more complex in the commercial field. Right. So I decided to leave and keep my commercial business, my 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 pardon, my litigation business. Right. Because um, I was a specialist and still am in real estate stigma. Right. If there's a court case on stigma. I'm the guy, and it's not something I really want to do. So I went and I with my girlfriend. We went in kayaking in my, in Florida. And we were in a state park, and there were actually deserted islands where you can get a camping permit and spend a night. And we went, and we just went out there for the day, and we stayed on this desert island, this little island. And I actually thought about my future. Right. And I went and decided to kick it up to seniors and niche. But then all of a sudden, Remax spoke, reached out to me. And I'll tell you the truth. Um, I'm good at what I do, but I'm a terrible administrator. <laughs> I think most um, agents I, are. <laughs> I know. I'm not a good, and you know, since I've kicked it over to them, yeah. I can't believe why I didn't do this 15 years ago. I don't yeah. care. I, I'm not even talking about the brand Remax. I mean, if I'm a one man broker, let somebody else's ladies pick up and do the books and, the, and look after all the records and answer the phones and yeah. put in all the systems. It, 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 it was ridiculous me sticking on my own. I was just being sheer. A um, little stupidity and a little <laughs> bit of uh, ignorance on my yeah. part, not realizing how much time I was wasting. Yeah. I think from what I know of you and how long we've known each other, the one thing I can say is you've mastered mastering a niche, using it, moving on, mastering another niche, mastering it, moving on. And you, well, you've you got a lot of stuff. Well, you can. You and a lot, it out. Exactly. And a lot of people, I think, find are, find are afraid of mastering a niche because they think they're going to be stuck to just that niche whereas 
you can pr you can master it, get it on autopilot, move on, and keep that as a form of business. But the key is mastering that one and focusing on it and getting it good, and then moving on. And you've done a good job at doing that. Thanks, Ryan. I look, I'll be 67 years of age in February, and it's the very. I always joke with everybody. The only reason I ever wanted to be younger was to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> But um, now I've never seen so much opportunity out there. It's absolutely unbelievable, the opportunities. And for the first time ever, I feel I wish I had another 20 years or 30 years ahead of me in real estate because there are golden arm. I see so many niches. I see so much out there. I'll give you an example. When I was an active broker me, myself, all by myself, I would go out. I used to, we didn't have the aerial stuff. I'd have to go down to the libraries uh, one library especially, and look through aerial photos. And one of the things I did was I looked through Toronto backwards and forth. I see a huge black spot on a, on a, in a behind houses or something. I go, yeah. what's there? Yeah. And next thing I do, I target it and go down there. There's at least three sites in Toronto of townhouses because I ferreted out those spots, found them, and put developers together to put them in. Not only did I sell the deal to the developer, I then resold the houses for the developer. So I was good at doing stuff like that, but that game got played out. So if you're a gold miner, if you're looking for uranium and Elliott Lake plays out, you've got to go somewhere else. Baby. That's <laughs> yeah. the way it is. When the mine plays out, get out of that, get up and leave the area. Yep. It, it, the games change. The mortgage business. Um, I was a very wealthy man in a young age. Um, what happened to that wealth? Uh, that's a story of, for another time. But what happened was the game changed. The banks were allowed to get into the mortgage business. It changed the dynamic. When we had private money and the banks weren't in it, it was a heyday for us. Right. Well, the parade goes by. Change. Yeah. Exactly. I, I detest the fact that people say, oh, you know, I used to do all this. Well, you know what? I used to wear a white suit and dance to disco music. So <laughs> grow, grow, get up, suck it up, and get on with your life. Exactly. You know, there's so much out there, Ryan. There really is. I mean, let's take a look at right now at a golden opportunity. A golden opportunity. You've got the largest group coming through in society of seniors. They are not going to nursing homes. And yep. I don't want to get into a, a seniors thing. It's not about that. It's about a niche. Yep. Not enough people are building for the seniors. I, I'm sitting down with a group now and saying, look, why aren't we building plexes with elevators for the seniors? And they're, I'm being told they're too expensive. And I'm going, why do we have to do it in Toronto? Right. You know, why Toronto? Maybe there's other ways of doing this. I still see there's a future in the uh, the fourplexes and the sixplexes and what have you, because not everybody is cut out to build, live in a high rise. Right. And people want a barbecue and they want a yard. You know, if you're in a sixplex, you're only a, a flight and a half or so, two flights up, especially with a, with an elevator. You're you're almost you know not too high off the ground. You still can garden and do stuff. So. There, I, I see markets that are there that haven't been exploited enough. There's a lot of opportunities. And that's what people, most agents don't think outside the box and don't realize that. And again, they go back to their being afraid of narrowing themselves too much that they're not going to get business. And I look at there's so much more business. And if you're actually narrowing yourself by just doing those standard things that every other agent does, because then you're competing against every other agent. Whereas you could open up your own market and own it and make way more business, do less work, make more money, and have a, enjoy it a lot more than, well, than just Well, the other thing is you become the expert because you're, you're focused. And exactly. the, other, the other thing is you make the phone ring. The minute... Yep, exactly. They're right. looking for if you I'm, instead of you looking for them. If I'm in a terrible tax situation and I have to go to tax court and I go to my lawyer... My lawyer will turn around right away and say, you got to call so-and-so, who's a lawyer in the tax field. You know, I, I was looking around to refer somebody recently. I phoned three different lawyers about someone in taxation. I got the same name three times. What's that tell you? Yeah, exactly. You know, they're that the right person. person been, that guy's developed a niche. Yeah. You know, we're, we're sitting in Toronto, and people forget that for a real estate agent, I may have to ask someone about riparian rights and stuff like that and the lakes. Mm -hmm. But 
what what's interesting is they they stayed in a niche. They are the niche players. I, I mean, I'm being a little extreme. I mean, it's not a very big market today, being a maritime lawyer in Toronto, but. If you're in it, you're probably the only guy in it, yep. or one of the few. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, going forward for your own business, where do you see yourself going then? I'm looking forward to a very prosperous 2014. The hardest part today, there's two things that I have trouble with for those people listening to this. I live in probably one of the worst, I think it's number six for bad traffic in North America. It's become, <laughs> it it's become more onerous to drive around Toronto than it is to sell real estate in Toronto. Um, that's the tough part. The other thing is I've got to make sure that I'm not doing um, stuffing envelopes. I've got to make sure that every day I'm talking to people, seeing them one-on-one, -on -one, shaking hands. Um, as big as I am on social media, and you know I'm a, I'm, I like social media, um, yep. you've got to touch people. You've got to go face-to-face. You got to go nose to nose. You got to be out there. Um, I go for breakfast with people. I don't like lunches, by the way. I, I advocate to everyone: lunch is the biggest waste of a day that I've ever seen, with, unless it's <laughs> very special VIP type of person. Lunch. By the time you arrive there, sit down, do your lunch, and get out. You've lost anywhere from two two and a half hours. It's that's a lot yeah. out of the out of the workday. I can go to breakfast at yep. 8 o'clock, and even if we're lingering, I can be on the road at 10, 10, 30, and have a whole day ahead of me. Yep. I'd rather go for dinner. I'd rather go for breakfast, but not lunch. So I have certain rules <laughs> about how I, I conduct myself okay. in business. The other thing is um, I learned how to speak. I do a lot of seminars. I'm out there a lot, and uh, you've got to be out in the forefront. You've got to be speaking on your subject matter. You've got to be out. You got to be in people's mind. You've got to publish. You've got to write. Now, let's say someone says, "Well, I got ideas, but I'm not good at writing." You go on. Um, you go into Fiverr or one of the other sites. Get yourself a ghostwriter and get it done. Pay a hundred exactly. bucks. Pay a hundred. A... Look, at, I, I wanted to write a whole bunch of articles on seniors at one point. I had someone. Um, write a whole series of articles. I gave them the ideas and I edited them, but they, I, they did a better job than I would. Yeah, and and that's a, that's and, their niche. <laughs> and no, and at no time lost to me. Exactly. So there's a lot of things now. The other thing is I host a lot of events, um, which started as a fluke and now has become a lot of fun. And of those events, I have picked up three referrals from other brokers. That was not my intention, but it's coming to be. It's become a byproduct. Right. Um, my last one, I had 100 people come. I had to turn people away because I didn't have any more room. And people are asking me all the time to join my group to um, come out because we're really having a good time. We're fun. We're, we're meeting each other. Um, I started it because I felt that too many people were in social media and didn't know each other, and yet they were conveying, you know, they were messaging each other every day, but never met each other. Yeah, right, so I went to your Realtor in the Park event, and there's a bunch of agents that I met that get same thing. I've I've known on Facebook, but never actually got to connect. Never. Was, now you know them. Yeah, exactly. Now you can walk right up, shake their hand, and say hi. How are you? Yep. And there's people that you've met through Real Realtor in the Park. For those that don't know started as a whim it was the middle it was about may one year june and i just turned around it was a court it was about june and it was a gorgeous gorgeous day and i said why don't we just throw a picnic why not a bunch of realtors that have never met why don't we all get together anyways it took a little planning we ended up i think it was july that and we ended up doing it and about 50 60 people showed up yep. and it was potluck so i did it last year had 125 people from as far away as Montreal drove in and Perry Sound they came down from Muskoka they came in from Montreal they came in from London I think Sarnia yeah. so we covered Ontario now it looks like I'm going to have to do next year for 200 people because it's becoming an annual event yeah. and it, it became unbelievable I know a lot of people have met each other and have done a lot of business with each other face to face. By the way, 
one of my niches is constantly connecting with out of town realtors. I want to be the Toronto guy. Yeah. Very big for me. And I'm not, and I also am not a snob. Um, there's no such thing as it as a as a bad house to sell. I sold a 568 square foot house this year, and it was in that, as much pleasure as selling a big house. Um, I've never sold a house that small. That was my, <laughs> yeah, but that was in the, and that was in my heart of my niche because it was in the state. Yeah. But I've, I've never I've never sold a house, a single house that's under 600 square feet. That was a rare one for me in Toronto. Some condos, maybe, but <laughs> even it's it's smaller than most condos. Wow, yeah. You know, I mean, it was one bedroom house, and uh, it wasn't easy to get the mortgage on it too. There's the other thing too: when you're in a niche, you get so good at it that you, you no matter who you are, you control the deal. So when the other agent says, "Oh, I don't know if I can get a mortgage," from people say, "Don't worry, I'll get you the mortgage." Yeah, and that again, that positions you as an expert, and people look up to you even more, and make yeah. the experience a lot better for the consumer. You got to make deals. Cl- no, anybody can sell, but can everybody close? Yep. You got to be able to control your deal on all levels, and in a niche, you learn every aspect. It gets a niche. Players are so strong. Lawyers call them exactly. Yep. Okay, so why don't you wrap up? We'll give us uh, your golden nuggets of good advice for our listeners. Really good takeaway, and then uh, we'll go from there. Study your market, see where there's um, a market that no one's tapping, and if you have to, go look around North America. Start, if you don't know what your niche should be, then start looking at websites of other realtors all around North America and see what people are doing, see what people are selling, and why would you compete on price? Price is the dumbest thing to compete on. In in, 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 in in any sales, I don't care what you're selling, you can't make money undercutting. Yep. It's impossible. And this game that we're in, it's all about money, sorry. People say, oh, I'm in it for the people. <laughs> well, then we'll be a social worker. <laughs> exactly. If, you know, oh, I'm in it to make friends. No, you first you, make, you, you satisfy your client, you look after their needs, and if they're really happy with you, you become friends. But you don't go out to make friends. That's that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. I think we lost you there. I got you. I heard. Okay. I heard something in the background. I'm right. sorry. I was waiting okay. for you. I yep, heard. Sorry. <laughs> uh, went fuzzy. No, so, no problem. But in in general, look, it's been a great run. It's 46 years this year for me. I'll be um, um, in the summer. I'll be starting 47 years. And um, I'm looking forward to it. It's it's a fabulous business. I mean, I, I couldn't see ever having a job. It, it's it, if somebody ever came along and said to me, which is too late now at my age, but over the years people said, "Oh, we want you to do this or that." You know, I used to shake. The idea of going a nine to five or something actually is re, it's repugnant. <laughs> the idea of having a salary is repugnant. Yeah. Um, I have no limit. I can do what I want, when I want, as I want, but I've got to do everything with my own system systematically. And you know what, Ryan? Every day you do it. Yep. You do the same thing day in, day out, but every day is a challenge in real estate because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Okay, so why don't you give us the best way to get a hold of you? So for people want to check out what you're into and yep. what where to find you, what's the best way to do that? Well, I'm I'm easy to find Barry BarryLebel dot com. Um, I'm uh, got I'm on Facebook under Barry Lebel and Barry Lebel Professional Practice, and also my my main phone number is four one six seven eight four nine eight zero six. All right, Barry. So thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it, and we'll uh, looking forward to hopefully getting you some deals in Toronto. Well, thanks, Ryan. A belated Christmas and a very happy new year and a great 2014. I hope when we speak, um, you and I will speak over 2014, but I hope about the same time next year that we can both just turn around and say, we had a great year. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye, buddy.